So certain things are tough to do if you don't rise the, reuse the right method. So as long as you use the right method, I guess nothing's really that hard to do. <laughs> Such a cool shot. I don't know that I'll be using that shot often, but I need to make this this. So what I need to do first is I need to make a few cuts on my cardboard because this area I'm going to have to shrink and grab a razor blade. I have to shrink this area, but for now I at least need to flatten it out. So we need to add here, which I did out of my masking tape. I added here, so I, I, I'm gonna need to add that. So guys, I spent the other day. See, my table looks a little different. I spent about four hours this week after working on the car and on nights that I didn't do car stuff. I spent about four hours with a torch and a chisel, uh, orbital sander, my, my Eastwood Contour SCT. I just kept going over the table over it and over it and I finally got it down to, through all the coats of paint and I can actually like actually weld on the table now. I got a few spots where I connect my ground clamp and it's actually like a real fabrication table now instead of just being a metal table that I can't weld on. I could, but what I was doing was I would have to put the ground clamp actually on whatever I was welding. Now I can just leave the ground clamp on the table and anything on the table will ground to the table. So it's something I wanted to do since I bought the table. I just hadn't made the time to do it. I'm gonna go set this in the car real quick and make sure my measurements are correct. Alright, so I kind of messed around a little bit with this in the car. I think I got it where it needs to be. I think I'm okay if I were to clock these a little bit and get them so they're... These front edges are on the same, same bend line. Because in turn that will then create this second line to be at the same line. Or at least it'll get me close where I'll at least get, get it in the car and then I can modify it. I think I'll have to modify these areas here where the pedals are. What I, and what I mean by that is I may end up having to cut them back just a little bit more. But again, I can do that after the fact. I'm going to grab a straight edge. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to create my bend line, which should be here. I guess I removed this a little too quick. So my bend line is here. going to do is I'm going to get out get the plasma cutter out. I'm going to do my best to cut this out with the plasma cutter. I should be able to get pretty close. There are going to be some areas that I need to use the grinder or the cutoff wheel. But for the most part, I think I can do a majority of it with with the plasma cutter and then fine tune it with my with a flap disc. I'm going to get that out and I'm going to show you guys. I ended up, I bought a, a Beverly shear about two months ago. 
it ended up being garbage. Um, I don't know what the problem was with it, but even when I clamped the metal down, 18 gauge, I go to cut it, it would start to cut it, but then it would just fold it over. So I don't know if there was a bend. I don't know. It, I didn't test it before I bought it. It was such a good deal. So what I ended up doing was, I ended up keeping the stand that it came on. I, got, I sold the Bebelly shear and I ended up making the stand into my plasma cutter stand. And I'll show you guys it. It's super cool. I'm actually going to end up making one for my welders now. Uh, I just need to get the stock to do it. So, uh, But it's pretty cool. So you guys will be able to check that out in a minute. I'm going to switch out my battery and then I'm going to get to cutting out this sheet metal. Let's go for a walk. Alright. I'm going to go grab my my plasma cutter stand that I made. You guys are going to be so impressed. So this is my plasma cutter station. I went to Home Depot or Lowe's, I went to Lowe's actually and grabbed a couple of like, old, grabbed a couple hooks down here. Grabbed a couple hooks from Lowe's. I keep all my hoses on it. I got another one on the back side for the plug. So what I ended up doing is I took a piece of sheet metal, measured it out, cut it out with my jump shear, put it on my box pan brake, ended up breaking these edges up, welded the corners together, and then I actually took the screws that were in the bottom case, three on each side, I measured them out, drilled the holes, and attached the actual unit, the actual tool, right to the tray. Added a couple welds, just a few tack welds on the front and the back, and that's it. Done. Super cool. I've used it a bunch of times already. It's got locking casters. So when you're using it and you're pulling it, it's not moving around. When you need to move it, you just unlock them. So guys, I'm going to end up making these for all of my welders. Uh, this thing's super handy. What I'll do is I'll just mount my tank on the side. I'll build a lot of small little tank holder on the side. And I'll just have, be able to have everything, maybe a spot to hold my helmets too. And uh, we'll be good to go. So I'm really happy with that. And like I said, I paid $100 for the shear with the stand. And I couldn't build that stand for $100. It even came with the casters. So I sold the shear, kept the stand. So I ended up getting the stand for nothing. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And let's get to using it now. Let me hook up my air compressor and we'll be good to go. I can just do one side at a time. Why don't I do that? And we'll just actually run a ground to my table. And I'm ready to go. As you would imagine, I'll have a little bit of cleanup to do, but not a whole lot. 
a little bit in where my pedals are gonna go. I wanna open up these areas a little bit, at least this one. What I'm doing now is I'm just throwing a, a flap disc on the, my grinder and I'm gonna get some of these lines cleaned up that you'll see. Some of them you won't. You won't see any of these lines in the center. But I do want to open up a little bit on the inside where the brake pedal is. Okay now, let's get the bead rolling. So this goes this way. Hello, today on this old Harad. Why does it keep doing that? Stay. No, go back. Back, says me. Now what I need to do is start bending this panel up. So I need to go up to the top garage. So what I'm going to do now is going to go up to the top garage, throw this in my metal brake, my box pan brake, and I'm going to break this line here. I'm going to bend it up. And then what I need to do is I'll need to actually cut a small little pie section out of this little piece right here. So I can bend this over, bend this over, bend this up, and then I gotta bend this up. So I'll do, I'll do this one up there. The rest of them I'll have to do down here on the table. That's it so far. Can't really see if it fits yet until I at least uh, get all these edges bent up and broke. So let's go do that. <clears throat> and we're getting it done. Check it out! Boom! This is what I got so far. Just went up to the top garage, bent up these edges, bent this line here. It's getting close to, to start hopefully fitting it in the car, making some final adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish breaking these edges to 90 degrees. I couldn't do that because uh, my box pan prank just wouldn't allow it. So I'm going to finish that up on the table with my big block of steel. And then kind of start to get ready to try to put this thing in the car. I'm gonna take my hammer. I'm gonna grab some ear protection real quick. Grab a hammer. Get the pound it. All right, I'm gonna go see how this fits in the car. So far, I still have a little bit of shaping to do, but this is not gonna be anything fancy. It's just gonna be, you know, utilitarian, let's say. Um, so what I still need to do is I still need to break this edge across the top uh, till here, till this mark here, 
where it steps up. And that's basically it. So I want to at least go put it in the car and see if it fits. So let's go see if it fits. All right, so here we are over at the 1927 Roadster. And let's see if the panel we're working on fits inside the car. So far, it's looking randy. with the passenger side so far. Let me see a few things I need to modify. I can shift it by don't really know how I got it in there, but I did. Can't manage to get out. There we go. All right, I'm gonna make some modifications real quick. Okay, after a whole lot of tries, I'm not saying this is 100%, but I think I'm getting pretty close. fitting better each time I put it in or take it out. So that's it on the driver's side. I got clearance. Clearance with my pedals. Passenger side. I really have no interference issues over here because there's nothing over here. I want to make sure that I'm in the right spot when I get ready to hammer this edge up onto the lower lip of the firewall. What I do is basically set it right where it needs to be. I'm going to make a quick mark. I'm going to throw some self tappers in here real quick just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to start pounding this thing home and then there's really not much to do on the driver's side except uh, I got a couple spots over here that I'll drill a couple holes and actually through bolt it to the firewall or maybe I'll just weld it probably just weld it I guess I mean it's never gonna come apart while I own it when I see another modification I'm gonna make I'm gonna go do that real quick and then I'll be right back what I need to do is I actually need to re-break this edge. So I'm going to flatten this edge out. I actually need to re-break it about three-eighths of an inch up. So it'll actually come up at an angle. So this piece of sheet metal will kind of come out at an angle instead of being just straight following this line. And I think that's about it. So I'll be right back. I missed it. I have horrible aim. If you guys have been around since day one, you know that. Okay. This is what we're going to do. I need to flange the front edge of this panel. And then I'm going to punch some holes in the back edge of this panel. And then I'm going to connect them. Like that, I think, somehow. I don't know how. We're gonna do it when it's in the car.
All right, let's get this put back in the car and get it welded into the car. I forgot I gotta clean up the metal where I'm gonna weld it to. I'm gonna have to do that first. All right, I'm gonna grab the welder, get it fired up, tack, get this back piece welded here across the subrail, and then I'll be able to pound these home, get this all nice and tight, and then get the front panel put in. I am gonna end up having to modify uh, that other panel, I'll end up having to notch it a little bit, but I'll do that once I start welding it together. So I know everything's lined up where it needs to be. But uh, yeah, let's get the welder and get this thing, uh, get this thing put in place. Now once I get, once I get the hump over the bell housing in the transmission tunnel, this will all stiffen up. This isn't the prettiest, but like I said, these screws are temporary. Probably didn't need to put that many of them in there, but I did. All right, everyone. I'm gonna pretty much wrap it up here for the video, at least this portion of the video. And happy the way things are coming out so far. I definitely still do have a little bit of work on the on the toe or the, the firewall extension. And then I'm gonna have to build my templates to cover the bell housing and then the transmission. Uh, that'll be the next step. And I uh, just want to say thanks for everyone following along. Really appreciate the support. Uh, thanks to Yes Welder if, if they're watching. Thank you guys for also for the support, uh, the opportunity for the partnership. Thank you to Delphi for the headlamps. I use my headlamp today, uh, just kind of, you know, doing daily maintenance, you know, maintenance on my daily drivers and whatnot. I basically use that thing every day. Thanks to everyone who's, who's taking their, taking their time, gone on the, the, the different sponsors' websites of the channel and spent their hard-earned money on, uh, on products. Hopefully you guys will be as happy with them as I am. So again, 
Next is the transmission tunnel. Um, really starting to wind down on the fabrication as far as you know the inside of the car goes. Uh, I do have some patch panels. I have the bun panels, you know, down here at the bottom of this here, the bun panel section on the back of the car. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, you know, you're going to keep going forwards with the car now that you're making things a lot nicer. At this point, no. I want to get all the fabrication work done. The body has to come off. I do have to remove the body because there are things that I need access to that I worked on up in the driveway when I kind of first, when I first started the build that I really haven't had access to since. So the body will have to come off. I will end up finish welding everything across the front of the firewall that I just temporarily uh, you know, zip screwed on. Um, those will all come out. All those holes will get filled. Uh, and then anything that needs to get welded and seam sealed under the car, I'll do that at the same time I'm working on doing any welding on the chassis. I need to finish weld my radius rods, uh, the mounts on the rear axle. That rear axle is temporary. I will end up with a V8 rear axle in the car, most likely before Pine Tree Jamboree. Uh, I just need to source it and you know do the fabrication and get that get that done. But for now, uh, I'm gonna really I'm gonna try to enjoy the car with the Model A rear axle in it. There's really no reason why I shouldn't be able to drive the thing with with the Model A rear axle. Yeah, you know, kind of light lights kind of shining a little bit at the end of the tunnel. As far as like the major fabrication work, I'm really looking forward to buttoning up a few more little fine details on the car and um, you know, kind of just get ready to go through the motor real quick. The motor is a fresh motor. It was a, it was a freshened up motor uh, from a machine shop. It's just been sitting for a little while. It's, it's always been stored indoors, uh, previous owner and then myself. Uh, so it should pretty much be ready to go. I do have an issue with the oil pan. My buddy Pete Flavin actually brought one down to me. Uh, when the motor comes out of the chassis, you'll end up swapping out the oil pan. At the same time, I'm just going to make sure everything's nice and clean, uh, regasket everything so I know things are good to go, and uh, finish up the fuel system, cooling system, all that other stuff, wire it and fire it. Uh, hopefully that'll be coming up you know, sometime this spring. I don't see why it shouldn't. I'm getting close. So thanks again, everyone. I appreciate you guys' support. Thanks for following along. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.